Honorable Olis. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Speaker. Before I start my speech, I must just address a point made by Minister Patel. Minister Patel, I haven't heard that kind of a whopper in ages. Minister Patel came here to tell us ostensibly how we were going to turn the President's jobs plan specifically into a program that was going to help create jobs and that he would give us some details. And then he came here and he told us about Mercedes-Benzes and BMWs and Volkswagens and cars that had started coming off the production line in many cases before the President even came up here to speak. How can that possibly be a result of the President's speech? In fact, they are a result of the Motor Industry Development Plan, if we really think about it. Then he told us about Nestle and the massive expansion plans of Nestle. Well, that was also planned long before the President came up here to speak. And then he spoke about the power stations. Well, unfortunately for the logic, the Madupe power station is already half complete and the President only came to speak to us last Thursday night. So I'm not sure how exactly those are results of the State of the Nation speech or even of the new growth path. However, let me get to the point. Honourable President, jobs are harder to create than we think. South Africans want to be a working people. Nobody wants to be unemployed or to sit on the side of the road and beg, which is a travesty that we see every day. To give people real dignity means for most to be gainfully employed, to have a job. Visiting the sheltered employment factories last year with the portfolio committee, uh, we were able to see how a disabled person could uh, build furniture and get a meaningful job, and in that way earn an income to enable them to look after themselves to a degree. It was just a pity to hear how over the de past decade the number of people that are employed in those sheltered employment factories has dwindled by a couple of thousand. But that project can be a light at the end of a tunnel for many people that are unemployed. And Honourable President, the country does salute you for putting the emphasis in your speech this year on job creation. With over 35% of our adult employable people out of work, unemployment is our biggest national crisis. And a President who did not acknowledge that and emphasise it would be a national embarrassment. In that vein, the DA welcomes the 20 billion in tax breaks outlined in the State of the Nation address, the 10 billion from the IDC to stimulate jobs growth and the 9 billion jobs fund to be established through the Finance Minister's budget later this year. They are all steps in the right direction. In fact, we have had as a DA policy pro proposal a DA youth wage subsidy since 2004. If these funds are used for that purpose, and others, then we of course must and will support this plan, Mr. Manuel. We've had it as a policy for seven years already. We look forward to the youth getting jobs as a result. However, the new growth path tabled by Cabinet point out some details that must be borne in mind when we're sloshing around all this cash for jobs in the way that the SONA speech does. The framework calls for a very specific kind of jobs growth through jobs drivers and securing strong and sustainable growth in the next decade. Most of, and I quote, most of the protected new jobs will come from the private sector. Five million of those new jobs. Now, Honourable Spe Deputy Speaker, we need to ask the President this question. Sir, how does the 39 billion rand translate into private sector jobs exactly? Of course, policies, budgets and speeches must work together or we won't create anything at all. And we, as we've heard before, let us not forget that President Barack Obama threw over 700 billion rand at saving jobs, bailing out banks, and where is all that money today? Many jobs in the US were lost anyway, and much of that money being ended, up, ended up being paid in bonuses to Wall Street executives instead of saving the jobs of ordinary workers. We've only got 39 billion rand, it's a lot less. If the tax breaks induce the likes of an Alcan aluminium to set up the elusive aluminium smelter at Kucha, then a few thousand permanent jobs could be created and we could say, okay, some of that money was well spent. However, what South Africa was expecting in the SONA speech 
What's some direction on how to create the jobs, Minister Patel? More specifically, we have just witnessed the war of words that has broken out between Gwedi Montashe, the General Secretary, the new Minister Oliphant, and Kasatu on the direction of the new labour laws and the conundrum over whether, and listen carefully, we should first focus on better quality jobs or more jobs. The Honourable Minister was quoted as saying in the debate, decent employment, and I quote, can only be successful when all stakeholders constantly keep in mind the context of the South African and global economies, the social realities such as poverty, inequality and education levels and the long-term goals for South Africa that must be weighed against short-term costs. And a living wage, yes, at a later stage, and it's going to be part of those things. She then later realised the storm that had begun and added, let's not get into an either-or debate. Why not? We want jobs and we must strive for decent work, she says. But, Honourable President, there is a debate raging in South Africa, a very valuable debate, and South Africans are looking for direction on this issue. Mr. Mantashi saw it quite clearly, in fact. He said, our view is that jobs must be created. Once created, then those people can engage on conditions of employment. There's an order there. If you first negotiate conditions before you are in the job, then you are putting the cart before the horse. That's Mr. Mantashe. The reason that this debate is so important is because it goes to the heart of why there has been such limited jobs growth in South Africa when the economy was growing. The limited uh, sorry, the Labour laws proposed under the previous Labour Minister and tabled in December for comment by Minister Oliphant uh, uh, now come along. The reason for the huge public outcry against these laws is that they will destroy jobs just at the time you, Mr. President, are trying to create those jobs. At the heart of the problem really lies the unrealistic demands of Kasatu. The other labor unions and even FEDUSA had different proposals for the new legislation, but Kasatu cried wolf with words like ban labor broking and end all temporary work and outsourcing in the Republic, all for a few new union subscriptions and membership numbers in Kasatu SIS. Kasatu spokesperson Mr. Patrick Craven confirmed this on the radio when he debated me a couple of weeks ago. He said, Mr. Ollis has a point. He then went on to explain that Kasatu does believe that shutting down labour brokers and limiting of temporary work will make it easier for Kasatu to unionise additional members and grow their organisation, and that this was in fact the reason for the demands on labour brokers and temporary work. That is a travesty. The new labour laws will kill many, many jobs to create just a few new Kasatu members. What a disaster for Honourable the national member, growth path. Your time has expired. Thank you.